Is 5G making airports unsafe? Is the plane you're on going to crash land? There are a lot of baseless conspiracy theories about 5G. This is not one of them. This has to do with radio altimeters. According to the FAA, the Federal Aviation Administration, the radio altimeter is an important aircraft instrument and its intended function is to provide direct height above terrain slash water information to a variety of aircraft systems. I would imagine, I'm not a pilot, but knowing how far you are off the ground is important. Yes. One of those things. What systems could be affected by it? Class A terrain awareness warning systems. Enhanced ground proximity warning systems. Traffic alert and collision avoidance systems. Takeoff guidance, flight control. I mean, this tool ultimately is super important for pilots when they're trying to land planes in bad weather. And this document then goes on to say that a wide range of other automated systems also rely on this data that can be affected. And it could happen during any phase of flight, most critically during takeoff, approach, and landing phases, which are obviously important parts of the plane flying process. So is this something to be concerned about? Yes. 5G comes into play because Verizon and AT&T are trying to deploy C-band 5G at airports, and the C-band 5G bands are very close to the same bands the altimeters use. The United States frequency allocation chart is a colorful amalgamation of every single band in this frequency landscape that we have. This is a map from 2016, and if I zoom in down here, this part hasn't changed. Aeronautical radio navigation between 4.2 gigahertz and 4.4 gigahertz. This whole fixed satellite fixed area over in here has now been sold to Verizon AT&T. There's a buffer zone between 4 and 4.2 that was supposed to prevent interference, but it became obvious very quickly that this little buffer zone was not actually going to be enough to not interfere with the radio altimeters. Right, the bands that AT&T and Verizon got are 3.7 to 3.98, so we're getting really close to the same bands those altimeters use, and that's why there's this issue. Although this is all just coming to light in terms of the news cycle, the government has been looking into this for a while. So I decided to find out, is there actual data behind this? concern or is it just sort of a theoretical possibility something could go wrong but why are we making a big deal out of it like maybe some of the carriers have said i found this riveting 231 page document that talks about the actual tests that have been done this chart stood out to me the testing we're talking about is the interference from c-band 5g as it interferes with the radio altimeters in planes which are very sensitive on this graph, you can see that the black line is where it needs to be, and then there's a safety margin, which is the red shaded area. And in urban areas, as planes basically get closer to the airport, the interference is greater than the tolerance of the radio altimeter. And that's why we're seeing these lists of airports that have buffer zones, and they're all in these urban areas because of this type of research where they've noticed that in urban areas, the planes just aren't able to maintain a strong enough connection to the ground because of all the other C-band interference. Now the carriers are saying this shouldn't be an issue at all because over in Europe went off without a hitch. However, that's a little bit dishonest or maybe more than just a little bit dishonest. So in Europe, the C-band 5G bands they're using are 3.4 to 3.8 as opposed to the US 3.7 to 3.98. So the bands are lower and that's why there have been fewer issues in Europe. Farther away, exactly. And actually France tried to do the 200 megahertz buffer and they realized that it wasn't enough. And so they had to retroactively go back and add more buffer. The chart I just showed you has to do with commercial airliners. But as soon as we start to look at business jets, for instance, or usage category two, it needs to be at the black line. And then there's this buffer zone, the safety zone, but you'll notice that all these lines up here are way above where it needs to be. And that means that almost none of the smaller aircraft that don't have these really robust Boeing level radio altimeters like are totally not going to work in low visibility conditions. On the FAA's website, their 5G and aviation safety page, currently 90% of the US commercial fleet is supposed to be okay to go. We should all say 10% is still a lot. The 10% is still a lot, exactly. But although it says that all Boeing 777s, for instance, are clear to go, January 25th, the FAA issued an airworthiness directive prohibiting 747s and 777s from landing at airports where 5G interference could occur. To me, it sounds like this just wasn't very well thought out to begin with. And there was a quote from the Emirates president that I want to read. We were not aware that the power of the antennas in the United States has been doubled compared to what's going on elsewhere. We were not aware that the antennas themselves have been put into a vertical position rather than a slightly slanting position. So it sounds like they just 
stuck up these towers however they felt like doing without any thoughts about what the potential consequences might be. For the longest time, as you saw in that 2016 chart, radio altimeters had their own little piece of real estate and mm -hmm. there weren't many neighbors. But then all of a sudden, the government sold the land to AT&T and Verizon and they came in and they're making a lot of noise. They're mm -hmm. like, we got plans for this. But the altimeters who have been here for the longest time, they've actually sort of been spreading out into other people's lands. They're not as good as they should be. One of the reasons why AT&T and Verizon are really pushing for C-band and they don't really want to wait on this is because they're trying to catch up with T-Mobile, who is by far the leader in 5G. AT&T and Verizon has spent tens of billions of dollars acquiring the C-Band. They want to implement it quickly because they need to catch up to T-Mobile, who really isn't going to be pushing C-Band until late 2023. So there's a big monetary incentive for Verizon and AT&T to get this out as quickly as possible. So what's the solution? I want to read this quote from Nicholas Calio, the president and CEO of Airlines for America. The fix is basically working out where the bandwidth is, the amount of power used, the tilt of the antennas, the placement of the antennas. There are mitigations that can be put in place. It's just going to take time to do it. The fix can be almost immediate tower by tower. Why didn't they just do this to begin with? It's an immediate solution if you take every one of the thousands of towers one by one. It's not very immediate. It's immediate for each individual for tower. For each individual tower. Yeah. The government knew about this for many, many years. They sold off the spectrum. C-band 5G is built for airports. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, it's, it's a perfect use case for this technology where it's not like people packed in like a stadium, which is the high-band 5G, and it's not the crappy T-Mobile rural, band, yeah, yeah low-band 5G. It's, it's built for a bunch of people all in the same place, don't have to rely on public Wi-Fi. Yeah, airport Wi-Fi is especially bad. It is, it's awful. And you gotta pay for it sometimes. Don't even get us started mm -hmm. on airport yeah. Wi-Fi. And then the government says, no, you can't do this because, oh, by the way, the planes might crash. And the reason I tend to think that it actually is an issue, aside from the fact that there's scientific data, is that there's really no reason for the airlines to shut this down. I mean, like, they don't really have a monetary incentive right. that well, I can see. The airports would benefit from having that C-band 5G. People would, you know, not have to rely on that Wi-Fi as much. It's gonna make their lives easier if mm. people can get distracted by their phones yeah. and not have to worry about airport Wi-Fi problems. We're gonna leave a link in the description section below with a list of the airports currently being impacted by this 5G debacle. And please join this channel. Right, join our friends, our family, our Davids. I love explaining this type of thing to people and looking into the data behind it. If you don't love looking into the data as much as I do, you might wanna consider joining this channel. It really helps us out a lot. We appreciate it. And I have an idea for a solution, I think, to this problem. It's instead of only relying on these radio altimeters, people could just turn on their phones mm. and tell the pilot if the signal's really good. Mm. Because if they have a really strong signal, it means that they're getting close to the ground. So like, hey, I just got good service, pull up. Or build a time machine, go back in time and plan this stuff out ahead of time. Roads, where we're going, we don't need roads. Either one of those solutions are equally viable. Equally viable, equally realistic. Yeah. Yep. Thanks for watching.